degenerative disease is painful, both physically, emotionally, and financially. If you or a loved one has been affected by any degenerative disease, including arthritis, high blood pressure, diabetes, ADD, osteoporosis, or cancer, stay tuned for a pioneering new concept in health and longevity. Hello, and welcome to The Undoing of Disease, What Your Doctor Doesn't Tell You. I'm your hostess, Margo Watson. I'm here in the studio with trace mineral experts, Dr. Joel Wallach and Dr. Gerhard Schrauser. Glad to have you gentlemen here. Thank you, Margo. Good it's to be with you. It's wonderful to be here. Dr. Schauser, before we spotlight the prevention of cancer and other diseases, can you tell us what are the strengths of our current medical system as it stands now? As it stands now, we are absolutely excellent and first rate in emergency medicine, in surgery, anything that has to do with first rate technical equipment. In this regard, we are number one in the world. Dr. Wallach, for the last 30 years, you've been involved in biomedical research and clinical medicine. Tell us what you see as the major weakness of our current medical system in America today. Well, it's very expensive and it treats the symptoms rather than going at the root cause of the disease. It's unfortunate this is true of the human medical system. Hmm. Are there medical treatments or myths or recommendations of the past that have been abandoned which have now been found to be harmful? Oh, absolutely. Uh, Margo, the cholesterol thing is probably the biggest fraud ever perpetuated against the American people. Low salt diets are totally useless and uh, low fat uh, diets. Uh, this uh, has created more diseases, more physician caused diseases now than there were 40 years ago. Hmm. There's a lot of myths that you've discussed in your lectures before that have been perpetuated. Are there any other ones that were really interesting? I, I remember some that Chicken soup no longer is valuable, but, <laughs> but if you run into your doctor, right? Well, um, for instance, the myth that diabetes is genetic, uh, that's what I call a medical caca. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's certainly not uh, true. Um, adult onset diabetes, which makes up 85% of the diabetic population, is actually uh, due to a deficiency of two trace minerals, chromium and vanadium. And yet, uh, and this has been known since the 1950s, and it, it, it's a tragedy and almost criminal that uh, doctors continue to tell people this is genetic and their only course is to take insulin for the rest of their life. Hmm. And there are other options, obviously. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. They, people can wean off of insulin. Uh, people can get rid of their diabetes. It's just a matter of some education and doing some basic things that everybody can afford, just pennies a day. Dr. Wallach, you are a guest to over a thousand radio shows and numerous TV programs across the country each year. If you were to compare the American medical approach to other countries in the world, how would you rate it? We wouldn't rank very well uh, when it came to actual numbers, Margot, although the American medical system when it comes to technology is, is the most envied medical system in the world, yet we don't set any longevity records. We rank 17th in longevity by the World Health Organization. There's actually 16 other countries whose peoples live longer than we do. We rank 19th in healthfulness. That means that there's 18 other countries whose peoples live longer than we do before they develop cancer, heart disease, high blood pressure, diabetes, arthritis, osteoporosis. We rank 23rd when it comes to live births and first year survivability of babies. And we rank dead last in a survey of 32 top industrialized nations when it comes to preventing birth defects. We rank 32 out of 32. So what this means, what these basic numbers mean, Margo, is we have the highest priced healthcare system in the world but not the best. Well, I thought it was because of our American system, the capitalism <laughs> stress, is that, but it's not that. Huh? No, it's an ignorance in the medical profession. Dr. Wallach, as a veterinarian and physician, you've launched quite a stir. How did you come to believe that most diseases result from simple deficiencies? Well, Margo, uh, as a veterinarian, uh, we learned that we could prevent and uh, actually cure diseases in animals, uh, reduce the amount of health care cost by using nutritional formulas, and that's basically because we don't have uh, insurance for them. We don't have Blue Cross Blue Shield, major medical hospitalization. We haven't come out with that yet. Uh, huh? Well, they've tried it many, <laughs> many times, but it's actually cheaper and more effective to prevent and cure diseases with nutrition. And I tried to get uh, uh, medical doctors in the medical industry and, and people who are in a position of authority in the medical system to adopt this concept for human beings. It was actually on 2020 uh, with Hugh Downs and Geraldo before he got his nose broke for the first time. <laughs> Uh, trying to get this uh, concept across, but uh, it wasn't uh, interesting to them. 
And so I went back to school for four years, became a physician, and I practiced in Portland, Oregon for 12 years as a general family practitioner. I used everything I'd learned in uh, veterinary nutrition on my human patients, and it works just like a charm in humans. In fact, it works so well that a lot of my patients used to kid their friends and, and their relatives, and they say, look, if you're not happy with what doctors are doing for you, go see Doc Wallach. He'll treat you like a dog, but you get better. <laughs> Excuse me for playing the skeptic here, but you said that farmers and ranchers supplement their animals' food with vitamins and minerals. Well, for me, it's, it's not hard to conclude from that fact that their feed was lacking something. Absolutely, and, and a farmer, of course, is in business. And if he has to spend a lot of money on veterinary care, if he loses animals to disease, can't get them to market in time, he does lose money. And so he's learned uh, through research at big agricultural universities that by supplementing animal feeds, he's going to keep his costs down and he's going to be much more profitable. Hmm. Supplementing? Yes. What does that mean? Well, that means adding vitamins, minerals, and trace minerals to animal feeds because they know that our soils are deficient and plants cannot manufacture minerals, and so they have to get them from the soil. Knowing that the soils are deficient, the only way to make sure each animal, even the weakest ones in the group, get the optimal amounts of nutrition, the only way is to put it in the feed. And blend it together. Blend it together, make pellets. That way, every mouthful is perfect. So does that mean, Dr. Wallach, that there's a problem with our food? Yes. Uh, I know you don't recall this, but there was a U.S. Senate document, uh, 264. And U.S. Senate document 264 was very remarkable because it pointed out very clearly that the American soils were depleted of minerals, nutritional minerals, and as a result, the crops that are grown there, the grains, vegetables, fruits, and nuts that are grown in these depleted soils are minerally deficient, and as a result, the animals and people who eat these minerally deficient uh, crops get mineral deficiency diseases, and the only way to uh, prevent and cure these nutritional diseases is by supplementing with minerals. Now, this document is pretty scary, Margot, because it was written and published in 1936. 1936? <laughs> 1936. How and, come we didn't know about it? Well, at that time, we began to put vitamins and minerals and trace minerals into animal feeds to make up the difference. Unfortunately for human beings, we got wonder drugs at the time. We got sulfa drugs in 36. We got penicillin in 38. We got cortisone in 42. And everybody was led to believe if we just, if we just give... Uh, medicine enough money for research and if we faithfully watch Dr. Marcus Welby MD every week <laughs> they will find a wonder drug for everything. Mm. Well you know that's not true today. I'm concerned about my health. I eat a low-fat diet basically. I exercise, I avoid sugar and caffeine, and I don't smoke and I try to get in a salad a day. Are you telling me that I still have a high chance of getting a number of diseases? Absolutely Margo because uh, first of all uh, even in the best of times in history and now and certainly in the future, minerals never occurred in a uniform blanket around the crust of the earth. And as a result, the, the ability of you to get all 60 of the essential minerals you need, which are two-thirds of the 90 essential nutrients, is less than you uh, winning a, a million dollars each day for 30 days in Vegas. It's just not going to happen. And so the only way that you're going to guarantee that you're going to get enough nutrients is to supplement. And, of course, we've tried this experiment for 200 years. Americans, as you point out, have eaten better than anybody. Uh, we've had the highest quality of food, yet our average lifespan is only 75.5, about half of our genetic potential for 120 to 140. And there are people that live that old. Oh, absolutely. There's six to ten cultures that were written up by the National Geographic, a very reputable uh, group of people that have a great journal, and they point out very clearly that the oldest documented living human being was 168 years old when he died. 168. Yes. Can you imagine? Lots of golfing in that. <laughs> what do you feel are some of the diseases you can avoid or prevent by supplementing with minerals, Dr. Wallach? Well, actually, Margo, according to the CDC, the Center for Disease Control, 85% of the hospital admissions in America are due to degenerative diseases. And uh, these, of course, are due to mineral deficiencies, most of them. This represents an enormous cost savings if we could prevent these things, which we can. We know we can. We're talking about diabetes, which is due to a deficiency of chromium and vanadium. We're talking about osteoporosis and arthritis, which are multiple mineral deficiencies, calcium, magnesium, manganese, sulfur, selenium, copper, okay. uh, zinc, and so on, plus some vitamins. And then, of course, you have cancer, which uh, we know we can at least significantly reduce the um, uh, rate of cancer by selenium supplementation. How many minerals, vitamins, that type of thing are we supposed to have? 
we're actually supposed to have 90 essential nutrients, uh, Margo. Uh, these include 60 minerals, that's six O minerals, 16 vitamins, 12 essential amino acids, and three essential fatty acids. And they're called essential nutrients for two reasons. Number one, our bodies cannot manufacture them. We must consume them every day, either as food or as supplementation. And number two, if any one of these essential nutrients is missing for a couple of months or a year or so, we get on the average 10 deficiency diseases. Mm -hmm. So 10 deficiency diseases times 90 essential nutrients, it's 900 diseases that are preventable with proper supplementation. Dr. Schrauser, the most dreaded of diseases is cancer. One of three people will get it in their lifetime and billions of dollars are spent each year to treat it. Can a correlation between cancer and mineral deficiency be drawn? Yes, and selenium, an essential element is the key element that we will be discussing today because there's some really exciting new news available which I think is a true gift to the American people. And this is a gift because it was announced actually on December the 24th uh, of 1996. <laughs> Good point. But few people probably watched. They looked for their presence under the tree. And so we can talk about that. Dr. Schrauser, as the current president of the World Biomedical Selenium Society, you actually discovered more than 20 years ago that selenium is a highly effective trace mineral for cancer prevention. Why, in your words, is selenium so important for cancer prevention today? Selenium is an essential trace element. This has been known since 1957. But my work has shown that selenium is uniquely able to prevent or delay the development of cancer almost irrespective of the cause of it. And in this regard, it is becoming the most important element that we have to protect us against cancer. Besides numerous responsibilities in your professional career, you've also spent a lot of time as editor-in-chief of a leading journal on biological trace element research. Why is cancer prevention so important? Because cancer is a major cause of death. Just think that in the US alone, Last year, 510,000 men and women died from cancer. Therefore, anything that we could possibly do to prevent this disease is important and should be done now. And people are really scared about it, too, because I guess they don't know what to do. That is correct, and because cancer, once you have it, is so difficult and painful to treat, it takes often years and um, the end is uh, very unfortunate to everybody. And the costs are very formidable, aren't they? Absolutely. Dr. Schrauser, one of your major research interests is the prevention of cancer with selenium. What evidence is there to justify the use of selenium for the prevention of cancer? By now, the cancer protective and preventive effects of selenium have been demonstrated in virtually hundreds of different animal experiments. And we now know that selenium protects not only virtually against all chemical carcinogens, but also against cancer-producing viruses. And this is something especially important because more and more it is recognized that viruses that often may be hidden in the body for years eventually may turn normal cells around and turn them into cancer cells. And therefore, it is of utmost importance to have something there that may even prevent oncogenesis, as we call it, by viruses, and selenium is that agent. So even if somebody doesn't have a genetic predisposition towards cancer, they could get it? Even then, you could get it because you could have the genetic information of a virus in your cells, which could be activated. But uh, studies have now shown that you can, in fact, prevent this activation if you get enough selenium. That's exciting news. Absolutely. This was actually shown in China, where there's a region north of Shanghai in which liver cancer incidence is extremely high. And the major risk factor in this area was hepatitis B, which is a virus. And it was shown that with selenium, you could in fact prevent not only hepatitis B, but also the occurrence of liver cancer in the population. As a world-renowned scientist and one of the pioneers in selenium research, what is our own natural defense against cancer? One of the chief systems that we have is our immune system. We have special white blood cells that have the sole purpose of killing 
abnormal cells that are practically almost always formed in our bodies. For instance, when you're out in the sun, certain cells may transform. Of course, you don't know about this. But there are lymphocytes watching over this and actually are killing these abnormal cells all the time. Therefore, to maintain the function of these blood cells is absolutely essential. And what is now so truly fascinating is that it has been discovered that if you give people extra selenium, you can enhance the activity of these cells so that they can kill five times more cancer cells than they normally could. And therefore, our immune system is actually enhanced by this trace element selenium. And is so it, it works naturally. And everything works naturally, and there are no side effects. In fact, there are only positive effects. And we will talk about some of these outside of the cancer problem. But what evidence is there that selenium actually prevents cancer in humans? There is what uh, we call epidemiological evidence, which shows that, for instance, in areas that are naturally rich in selenium, fewer people die of cancer. And then there are studies in which uh, doctors have collected blood samples of healthy people, stored them for many years, and then looked in that population for people who developed cancer, and then they compared the serum blood or blood selenium levels, and they found that people who later developed cancer had lower selenium levels before, that is, when they still were healthy, they developed cancer. And that gradually gave rise to the idea that selenium prevented cancer in humans. And ultimately, it led the National Cancer Institute and other agencies to fund a large-scale cancer prevention study, which was just concluded this year and which we will discuss actually shortly from now. Have there been some actual selenium supplementation trials with humans to prevent cancer? As I already mentioned to you, there's the first human studies were actually done in China. One was done with a large number of people in an area in which uh, esophagus cancer is very common. And it was found that just a supplement containing selenium, vitamin E, and beta-carotene would significantly lower the morbidity and mortality of that population. The trouble with that study was that it involved three agents, and so people, as scientists as we are, are skeptical, and we wondered, is it this or the other? But then there was a second study in Quidong, in the area with high liver cancer incidence, where only selenium was used and was found to be effective. And now we have the third study done in the United States with American patients, and there only selenium was given, and selenium was indeed found to be effective. Do they call it a wonder drug? <laughs> well, you could call it that. I would call it a wonder nutrient, because the selenium in all these studies was given at nutritional levels. And this is actually a very important point. We must never confuse prevention which deals with keeping your cells normal and healthy, with therapy, which involves a medical intervention where you have to correct something that has already gone abnormal or cancerous. So we will talk today exclusively about prevention. The best way. Action before reaction. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Dr. Schrauser, what makes this study so exciting? In my view, it was that the age of the participant was older than I would have expected to lead to a successful study. Because the average age at the beginning of the study of the participant was 66.4 years. At that age, you would think it's maybe too late to mm -hmm. start preventing cancer. And yet, after a period of seven years of, this was the average observation period, it was found that in those sub subjects who received the selenium supplements, the cancer incidence and mortality was up to 50% lower than in the control group, which only received placebo. That's exciting. <laughs> and moreover, what turned out to be, for me, even most amazing, that even a, a terrible cancer like prostate cancer aff afflicting el elderly men was very significantly prevented by just one agent, an agent that is inexpensive to obtain and doesn't produce any harmful side effects whatsoever. I think this is a study that the American people need to know 
because it really opens the door to it's an effective mechanism of cancer prevention, much simpler than anything anybody would have thought in the past. And it's taken so long for us to really grasp that information. We're so grateful you're here. Have there been any unexpected results? Uh, there have been not really any truly unexpected results, but I should caution that the original aim of that study was to see if patients, and in fact the participants in that study were all former skin cancer patients. The purpose of that study was to see if you could protect these former skin cancer patients from developing metastases or new skin cancers. And that didn't work. The lesson we have to take from this is the following. If you had cancer, it is possible that your body harbors transformed cells. Now these cells are usually more resistant and they are a different, you can say, category than normal cells. And there a simple nutrient such as selenium is not sufficient to cause a true effect. We need additional measures, therapeutic measures, but that doesn't mean that selenium shouldn't be taken. You just have to watch out. If you had cancer, this is a more serious matter and you need medical attention. You need additional mm -hmm. therapeutic modalities to protect yourself against recurrences. So the bottom line is really a balanced wisdom in using met traditional methods and also nutritional methods. Exactly, and you have to very well be aware that prevention is something else than therapy. And it's best to prevent first, too. And absolutely have to prevent first. What are the consequences of this for anyone who had cancer and now wants to take selenium? I think uh, anyone should now start, can now start taking selenium. It is only that those people who already had cancer still require the regular medical checkup and additional treatment modalities, as I have already pointed out. It is reassuring to see that one can prevent prostate, lung, and colorectal cancers. But what about breast cancer and other cancers that afflict women? Now the American study, which was directed by Dr. Clark from the Arizona Cancer Center, and which involved 1,312 participants, unfortunately didn't use enough women in the study. And the reason was that they totally randomized the study. They didn't know the, the gender of the participants. So unfortunately, that study didn't produce enough good data for breast cancer prevention. But our own studies have shown that breast cancer can be prevented in animals with selenium very well. And I can even show you a paper that was published as early as 1915 in the United States where they treated actually breast cancer patients with selenium successfully. Unfortunately, that study was forgotten. Maybe it was World War I. What one really has to watch for breast cancer prevention is that one has to begin taking selenium as early in life as possible. And that is because the malignant transformation of the cells in the mammary gland can occur early and these transformed cells often sit in little nests for years without doing anything. But these malignant cells then later could actually develop into tumors. And for that reason, I strongly recommend start with selenium as early as possible. And of course, you must maintain always uh, regular medical checkups, self-examination, and all methods that are available to detect mammary tumors as early as possible. Because it's always uh, the case that some cancer cells can form, which sort of escape the screening system of the body. So to summarize, it is still necessary to watch out very carefully in spite of taking selenium. But please uh, do take selenium. And another thing one has to consider is diet. I often tell women who ask me, what can I do to protect myself? So half jokingly, I say, buy a Japanese cookbook <laughs> and uh, switch to a more Japanese diet. Because we know that in Japan, the breast cancer mortality and incidence is remarkably low. But as now Japanese are starting to eat more Western styles, American food, Oh, in you fact, get all fat the breast, sugars. <laughs> yeah, that's right. The breast cancer incidence is actually increasing even in Japan. 
And so I say, let's turn around and say, if you are at risk of breast cancer, you think we are at risk, start live like the traditional Japanese do, which is fairly easy in the United mm -hmm. States. It's a well, rice it's a diet, very popular form of eating. seafood, mm -hmm. and but you also should take selenium with it. Because we've actually done a study where we gave mice that had a memory tumor virus a simulated Japanese and a simulated American diet. And it turns out that the American diet offered no protection hmm. unless and until we added selenium. The Japanese diet offered some protection, but it became much better when we also added selenium to that diet. So the answer is yes, live like a Japanese lady and take selenium. That is, I think, a very good recommendation we can make right now with ethical justification. Dr. Schrauser, what is the opinion of the National Cancer Institute and some scientific peers on selenium as a cancer preventative? A few years ago, I attended a special selenium meeting at the National Cancer Institute and there a spokesperson said that selenium is actually the only agent they had that showed promise. The only agent? That's what he said. Now, again, an agency consists of people, but uh, I wholeheartedly agree with him because, you know, there were other agents that were touted for a while, beta carotene, for example, mm -hmm. which didn't actually pan out in larger studies. But selenium has actually panned out. And so, yes, the National Cancer Institute endorses the selenium studies. However, they are cautious, and in my opinion, a little bit too cautious in making general health recommendations at this time. They want additional studies. Now, I ask you, would you rather wait another 10 years before <laughs> you start taking selenium? I would suggest that you don't wait. Start taking it now. What's the downside if I did take it and it proved they, they did these 10 years of research and nothing panned well, out. The <laughs> only downside of you taking selenium would be that you could, be a, could not be a participant of the new study <laughs> that they would do. But you would protect yourself. And I even wonder if there is not an ethical problem now to conduct such studies because I wouldn't want to participate in a study where I would tell you or without telling you, give you a placebo for the next 10 years and watch until you develop breast cancer. If I already know that the chances would be high that I could prevent you from getting the disease. Mm. And so these ethical problems should be addressed. And well, I believe we should take selenium. And you should take it. When we come back, we'll talk about just how old you can live to be. And we'll talk with a sweet lady who experienced a vitamin and mineral miracle. <laughs> Inga, thank you for inviting us to your home to mm -hmm. sit and chat, hearing about your life and before and after your illness. Tell me, what did you experience when you were sick? What kind of ailments were you facing? And then what was your life before? I faced arthritis, osteoporosis, chronic fatigue, Epstein-Barr virus, they were told me I had, fibromyalgia. I had, uh, my goodness, thyroidectomies. His total hysterectomies. What kind of other surgeries did you have? I you had, had fusions? fusions done on my neck where they took the bone out of my hip. Uh, I had knuckle replacement done. Because you had such bad arthritis? Yes. Mm -hmm. It completely deteriorated my knuckles. Mm -hmm. The pain you told me was so incredible. Yeah, it was. I took a roughly seven Vicodines a day just to be out of, to do some work, some functioning, you know, in my home. And you mentioned that the pain was so bad in your leg that even the doctors were suggesting? Yes, I had very bad blockages in my right leg. It throbbed day and night. Mm -hmm. And they wanted to take the leg off because of the pain. And I also was scheduled for more knee surgeries. Oh, my goodness. Chronic tendonitis, carpal tunnel syndrome. Just like you were falling apart. I, I was. That's what I did. So it imp impacted your life, obviously physically, but also financially. And mentally. I went through my life savings because of my illness for eight years. 
and had to remortgage a house what was paid for in order to build a new house, double door, everything, wide open space, so I could be moved in a wheelchair and I could function in that house. Mm -hmm. Had a uh, toilet put in, a high toilet, and open doors to get into a shower. Mm -hmm. yeah. Everything ready for a wheelchair. And you mentioned to me earlier that it got to the point where mentally you just didn't want to face it anymore. No, the pain was just so severe that you just, there comes a time you don't, you don't want to, you want to end it all. So what was the change? What happened to you that gave you hope? What gave me hope was Dr. Wallach listening to his radio show, the last 12 minutes of his show. Mm -hmm. He explained to a woman she had osteoporosis of the spine, and I followed these rules. My son drove to the grocery store, got the gelatin. We ordered vitamins, minerals. Collodial minerals. Collodial mil minerals, everything liquid, because you absorb it so much easier. And I start taking it day and night. I took it 10, 15 times a day. I didn't think I could overdose on vitamins and minerals because I should have been dead with all the medication I took. Mm -hmm. Roughly 20 some pills a day. Oh, my heavens. Just to be pain free. So from the time that you heard that radio program yes. and your son got the medication, yes. how, when did you start noticing a, a change physically? Well, I kept on taking it day and night and within three to four weeks, my back didn't go out anymore. And nine to 10 weeks after all that, I woke up one morning was pain-free. I felt, for the first time in 10 years, normal. I felt light as a feather, and I jumped out of bed, and I said, my God, I can move without any help. I walk. It was... Like a new life. Yes. I was like new reborn. <laughs> so what are you like now? What is your life like now? I'm a hellraiser, <laughs> like I used to be. I swim, I hike again with my dogs. I do what I want to do again. And you credit it to? Dr. Wallach. And the minerals, the vitamins, the colloidal minerals, and the gelatin. And a lifestyle, you mentioned to Oh, me. yes, yes. I will forever be thankful to him. He changed my life. I just follow what he says. Thank you, Inga. We appreciate you sharing your experience. And we wish you all the best in your new Thank life. Thank you. Wasn't that an incredible story? Gives all of us a sense of hope. Absolutely. After seeing the amazing results mineral supplements gave Inga Reagan, Dr. Wallach, should we just go out to the grocery or health food store and get any supplement? Or what should we look for? Well, basically, Margot, we have to educate ourselves on what a mineral is. There's actually three types of minerals. Uh, number one, there's the elemental mineral. This is uh, uh, relatively uh, low in absorption and availability to animal and human being. Only uh, as an adult, only three to five percent. Uh, to a child, maybe eight to twelve percent. And uh, in the 60s, uh, we actually came up with a form of mineral known as chelated minerals. This is uh, because farmers aren't willing to put a dollar in an animal's mouth and have 99 cents come out in the manure. <laughs> so <laughs> we learned that by adding amino acids and proteins and maybe even enzymes, which are proteins that do work, to the elemental mineral, it increases the availability tenfold. But the way that animals and people were designed to consume and absorb minerals is in the colloidal form. Colloidal? Colloidal. Okay. Yes, yeah, small particle size in suspension. And um, uh, this is 98% available to animals and people as much as 10 times more available than the elemental form. So basically what we're looking for here for usability is either the chelated, some form of chelated mineral or the colloidal mineral. Dr. Schrauser, what is the best form of selenium for us to take for absorption and to avoid toxicity? The best form is a nutritional form which is normally found in plants. And the compounds you should look for is selenomethionine, that's an amino acid 
which has selenium in place of sulfur, we call the sulfur amino acid methionine, but plants also produce an amino acid if you give them enough selenium, which is selenomethionine, and build that selenium into the proteins of the plants. And therefore, certain grains, for instance, are rich in selenomethionine, and this selenomethionine can be found in quality supplements, and that is the selenium that we should be taking at this stage mm. for nutritional purposes. Dr. Wallach, if I don't get hit by a train <laughs> and I choose to supplement with selenium and the other required nutrients my body wants and needs, how old can I live to be? Well, the fun thing is, Margo, uh, we have the genetic capability of living healthily now to be 120 to 140. There's no reason why you can't be playing golf and jogging and having fun playing cards with the girlfriends and the boyfriends <laughs> at 120 to 140. Well, human beings do have that genetic capacity, but I would be quick to point out that Americans don't do a good job when it comes to longevity. We only live to be 75.5 half of our genetic potential, and so we do need to consciously make sure we take in all 90 essential nutrients so we can get there from here. <laughs> Which all of us really want to do, as Absolutely. long as we have quality of life. Right. Uh, people don't want to be a shriveled up prune at, at 100 years old sitting on the toilet all day so you don't have any <laughs> uh, time to do anything fun like golf or play and, and so on. So you do have to take in all 90 essential nutrients so that you can be healthful. There, there's no reason um, you can't. Uh, for instance, Jean Calment, uh, this lady who now holds a record for longevity and if, uh, about 122, um, she rode her bike for 105 years as a volunteer librarian, and certainly um, uh, everybody can do that if we just do the right thing. In conclusion, Dr. Schrauser, how can we prevent and survive cancer? We can prevent it as we have seen with selenium and also, and this is important, with a healthy lifestyle. We should not smoke, we should not drink excessively, we should have a healthy diet. And we should watch for small changes which occur, and we should have regular medical checkups to mm -hmm. see if changes that we cannot observe have possibly occurred. And we should see to it that these changes are observed as early as possible. With this package, I think we can successfully prevent cancer. And Dr. Wallach, how can we prevent or improve these other diseases like arthritis, diabetes, heart disease, or Alzheimer's? Well, again, you've picked out diseases that are degenerative diseases that are either directly or indirectly related to nutritional deficiencies. And uh, as Dr. Schrauser points out very, very well, uh, give up the bad things like fried foods and sugar and caffeine and uh, e excessive alcohol and take in, consciously supplement with all 90 essential nutrients, 60 minerals, 16 vitamins, 12 essential amino acids, and three essential fatty acids. And of course, this includes uh, chromium and vanadium for the the diabetes, it includes selenium for cancer, it includes the calcium, magnesium, boron, and sulfur, and chondroitin sulfate for, for um, arthritis and osteoporosis. And if we do these things, we can have a quality of life all the way up to 140. If you or a loved one has been affected by any degenerative disease, including arthritis, high blood pressure, diabetes, ADD, osteoporosis, or cancer, don't wait for your doctor to give you permission. You've now learned many things today that your doctor doesn't tell you. So take control of your own health and give your body the nutrients it wants and needs today. Thank you for viewing this presentation. And remember to contact the person that sent this to you. For more presentations and books that go into greater detail, go to docwallachmedia.com. And be well. These statements have not been evaluated by the FDA. These products are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. The opinions expressed in this informational program are the express opinions of Joel D. Wallach, B.S. D.V.M. N.D., are not a replacement for proper medical advice and treatment. In all cases, we recommend you contact your physician directly regarding any medical conditions.